Appreciate everybody for checking in. Gonna talk a little bit about Derrick Rose. Should the Pistons retain Derrick Rose um, or keep him for the season or move him? Uh, but first, we're gonna talk about LaMelo Ball. His brother, Lonzo Ball, confirmed today that he's in Detroit working out. We seen him with the with the uh, Cartier buffs on. So let's talk a little bit about that. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon button, share the video. And he said he gave his, his brother some advice. His advice was to work out and just work out and just, you know, just keep working, building up to the draft. And uh, that's what he's doing. And he in Detroit working out. And I don't know why he in Detroit, unless he's working out for the Pistons individual, individual wise. Um, you know, they do those individual workouts. Sometimes you have three or four, you know, players in the building. And a lot of times you can play, the, you can have them go one on one. And I believe they worked out, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if they worked out Luke Kennard and, um, and De Devon Mitchell at the same time, but I do know they both worked in my individually and they chose Luke Kennard, and that's kind of our problem. Our problem is we can't really draft well, and that's what kind of Troy Weaver feels the biggest need since Jack McCloskey truly left. But, you know, for him choosing to work out in Detroit, he could work out anywhere else. So it, it may be a, a possibility that he just really working out for dudes, for teams that got the top five pick. Or it could be a strong possibility that, you know, maybe he may go to Detroit. I mean, a lot of people say, oh, it's not going to happen. Then people didn't think Zion was going to go to New Orleans last year. You know what I'm saying? And really, I'm going to speak it into existence, man. We need him. And I'm happy with Cole Anthony, too. You know, I'm happy with OB, but we need that floor general. And the Pistons are great. We got a good floor general, bro. And people say, well, you got people that, who against Mella, right? I don't like him. I think he hype. A lot of that got to do with his daddy. His daddy's pretty much changed. He ain't really been talking like he once was. That's what it got to do with. People don't like the daddy. People look at the brother and say the brother a bust. But the brother had an injury that he didn't even tell the NBA. He had a separate knee injury. Not that he healthy, he playing. But you can't really put the shortcomings of, of his family on him. You know, at the end of the day, this dude, 6'8", six, 6'9", six, probably going to still grow according to his father. You know, you know that length with, with Christian Wood and with Diambo is nuts. It, it's truly, that's that's a long team, and it's up to Dwayne Casey, which I don't have one lick of faith in him to coach us to a championship. I just don't like the way he coached. I don't like what he brings to the table. And a lot of people just say, why? Why? Because I know basketball, he's just not that guy. All right? But that's the conversation for another day. But with LaMelo Ball, he give you that rare ability of length. And that's a hardworking family. Say what you want to say about his father. But you don't raise three boys to get to the NBA level. His, bro his other brother, his middle brother, LiAngelo, he's in the G League. It's a lot of, it's a lot of professional uh, players, kids, that didn't even make it to the G League. Like Michael Jordan. I don't think these kids made it to the G League. But, you know... We gotta speak. We we need, and what what also comes with him coming here is national spotlight. The Pistons gonna have a ton of televised games, especially if the Corona go back the way it was supposed. It, it just you know pick up and leave. While they say quote unquote by the election day, if it picks up and leaves, and you know they're able to have fans whatever the twenty twenty one season start, he gonna sell out the joint. You know, is he gonna come in instantly and have the huge the biggest impact out of all the rookies? He could, you know, look at Mark, Michael Carter Williams. He had the biggest impact in, in, in the long run. What did he do? You got to remember, whoever they do bring in, it's a marathon and it is not a sprint. Remember that. It is a marathon and it's not a sprint. So, you know, he in Detroit. He working out. He getting it in. And um, his brother confirmed that. So, not pretty sure. Unless the, not sure if the, the piss is bringing him out for individual workouts. If that's the reason why, or just you know, he's just working out here. I think maybe he's working out here because it's a possibility he could play here. Maybe you know he look at another top five team potentially. But you know, hopefully the Pistons we do get the number one pick and we do able to grab him. But a lot of the individual workouts is gonna kind of really tell once we get deeper in the process. The interviews, the individual workouts, anything that come out of Lavar mouth can hurt the kid. Can hurt him. So. But like I said before, man, if you don't get him, it's, it's man, this this draft is deep with talent. This draft is deep with talent. I'm telling you, man, especially the point guard position. And if they don't get, you know, if they don't get the kid, 
And what if Golden State get the number one pick? I wouldn't mind, you know, grabbing Golden State number one pick. Or if we had to swap with them, I wouldn't mind that. You know, because they still can get who they looking for. Because let's just say uh, Melo do go first. Then Edwards. Then Wiseman. You know what I'm saying? Or, or somebody else. Or Obi. You know? Or somebody else reach for a point guard. I mean, they can still get the kid out of USC. They still can get Wiseman and play center. So, like I said, it might be in the, in the, in the Pistons cards to hope if we don't get the number one or two pick to hope that Golden State get it and trade with Golden State we'll take on Draymond contract especially if you can amnesty Blake Griffin I mean why not take on Draymond contract it makes a ton of sense you know you know I mean he from here I mean I know he ain't the greatest NBA player but hey man he bring an attitude he brings some defense to the table and we're not stunting that little four-year extension he got in four years we get that contract off the books We'll, we'll be a contending team, in my opinion, if they do it the right way. But like I said, if the Pistons don't get the number one pick or the two pick or they stay at five, then your hope is Golden State get it. You can make a deal with Golden State because they're trying to get Giannis there. You know what I'm saying? So I, I would I would definitely swap five for one or I should definitely try to acquire their number one pick. Only players that I wouldn't feel comfortable trading, you know, is Wood because it seemed like he want to be here and he's going to read back up. And I wouldn't feel comfortable trading Diambo. That's it. You know, but let's talk about Derrick Rose, man, uh, in the video. D. Rose, um, obviously, is waiting. He said he want to go back to Chicago next year. Chicago backcourt is kind of, uh, I think Chris Dunn, a free agent off. But they got a few guys, Kobe White and, and the other dude that came from Washington, Travansky, whatever it is. Um, question is, should we uh, trade Derrick Rose since he don't want to be here? But my whole thing is, if you're bringing in a young point guard, um, you want to have Derrick Rose at least there for one year to tutor him. Now, if you was going to move Derrick Rose because he obviously wants to go back to Chicago, and that's why he kind of went to Minnesota and he stayed, he came to Detroit because he wanted to stay close to Chicago. He got some type of infatuation with being home. He, I think he's a homebody, you know. And with him staying in Chicago, you know, he wants to stay close to Chicago and go back to Chicago, you know you're probably going to lose him and not be able to bring him back 21-22 season. So you will you lose Derrick Rose. Uh, let Derrick Rose walk for nothing? Yeah, it's cool. Because when you could have got something for him at the trade deadline this year, you could have tried to swing a Kuzma trade for him or swing something like that. You didn't. So you chose to keep him. So it ain't no point in trading Derrick Rose to this point on. Unless you have another hot start and you legitimately can bring some a value back to him. That's why D. Rose said he didn't want to get traded because he don't want to be far from Chicago. When he was far from Chicago in New York, you know what I'm saying, he ended up not, sh not showing up to, you know, going missing and all that. So he want to be in Chicago. That's the only place he want to play at. So it's just, it, it really, it's really no point of, of, you know, trading him for something. It's over with. When you could have traded him at his highest value, you could have you moved him. You know, he said he didn't want to move. He don't want to move. So, you know, right now you just, you make sure you draft a point guard. Don't have to be LaMelo, if, you know. Could be Killian, could be Cole Anthony. I mean, it could be, you know, it's a kid from France, dude from Iowa State. It's a lot of different possibilities creeping up, you know, through the draft. I mean, you could trade back up in the, in the, uh, in the, you could trade back into the draft. And that France kid that's cool with Diambo, he's pretty good. The only reason he slid out the lottery is because of health. So, you know, that's how the, the, the Spurs did it. They did a heavy, you know, they did heavy international draft, you know, drafting. So you put Diambo with that dude for France. So that means if you can get a deal to trade back into the first round to get your point guard and do for France, then you can take anybody you want to. You can take a center. You can take a Obi Toppins. You can take the kid from Israel. I forget his name. You know, you can you can do a lot of things. You know, it's a it's a talent-rich place at, at point guard in this draft. Even with Cassius Winston, they got him going at the end of the first round. So if you're going to keep Derrick Rose, you gotta make sure you he able to tutor, he's able to tutor his 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 protege at least for one year. So that's his value. Same thing for Blake Griffin. His value is to teach these young punks that's coming in how to win. You know what I'm saying? And how to conduct themselves as professional men. Same thing, you know, same thing for Tony Stell. He got one more year left. Conduct yourself. You know, the, and people think you put a young team on the floor and they're gonna figure it out. No, you need veterans. This is the reason why Jerry Dudley and Vince Carter hang at the end of the bench. They, they tutor and they mentor these dudes. They, an actual player that can still get out there and play and dribble and shoot and do that, 
is different, got a different perspective than the actual coach. That's why they had them veterans at the end of the bench. I'll be laughing. Oh, he's a bum. He can't do this. He can't do that. Oh, they can play. Everybody in the league, everybody in the league can play. Don't get it twisted. Everybody in the league can play. But you had those veterans at the end of your bench because it's different. See, from a coach's standpoint of view, he coached. He can't hoop no more. He can't do this. He can't do that. He ain't out here doing it. But when you got a veteran that's out here getting his hands dirty, and they doing the dirty work, you know what I'm saying? And you see them practice, and you 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 tend to listen to them a little bit more. So that's why veterans are are, are very very important. This is why you got a David Weston at the end of the bench. Those guys are important as far as the growth. And a lot of people don't see what goes on outside of the uh, outside of the game. You know what I'm saying? You got a lot of free time. No mess with that group, you know. You heard the Gilbert Arena story. Go look this up, man. I did this on my other channel. Check it out, Goodfella Sports TV. Uh, I did this a while ago. You probably won't find this unless you put Gilbert Arenas and Nick Young with my uh, channel name, Goodfella Sports TV. Here is that you know Gilbert Arenas taught Nick Young a lesson about falling in love with hoes. He taught him a lesson. He, he kept he kept banging all his all the girls he thought was was the one. He kept he kept showing them, but he kept banging them and bagging them and showing him that they don't love you. They just love your money and your and your clout. So a lot of that goes on, you know, on the road. You know, Dwayne Casey, you see the difference. How he was airing out Diambo's dirty laundry and trying to make him look bad in the media instead of just riding the wave. He don't he don't know how to connect with players. He's a he's a, oh I can't stand Dwayne Casey as a coach. That was the final straw when he did to Diambo, bro. I had an issue with that. But hey, let me know what you guys think. Um uh, hopefully Melo stay here, man. We can get him here, man, and we can uh you know we can build a championship, a championship contender. But, hey, let me know what you guys think. Hit that subscribe button, bell icon button. Don't forget, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all the links in the description. Uh, take you straight there once you click the link. Twitter's the fastest way. Then Facebook, then IG. Want to make a donation to the channel, cash out, PayPal, description. Best way to donate is share, share the video. But let me know what you guys think one time for the one time we go.